The 2012 study was very comprehensive, and so again, we were looking at a number of different cost allocations, what composes the services for the collection system, et cetera. And so here's just a quick summary of you know what, where those particular costs are for the collection system. So we have volume, about 50 percent, base, what costs are associated with disposal and landfill, hazardous waste, the solid waste processing facility, compost, and recycling. And so it really was just trying to get a, a good picture of really what those particular costs were and how they were actually allocated to the system. When we began to break those costs out to identify, well, how do we allocate those costs when we're actually charging rates, you can see here, here's kind of the definition of the functional cost pool, and here was the allocation basis. So a number of things were allocated based on accounts or billable units. It also looked at container size, how much time, how many uh, frequency of your pickup, so that was incorporated in there as well. So really, again, trying to say what service are you basically receiving from the city, and how do I price that equitably for those particular container sizes? And so that's really what we were looking at, and what the ultimately what we were doing in terms of the allocation basis and those cost pools that we had just talked about. In terms of the changes implemented, so there was a significant, quite a bit of work that you know happened in that last 2012 study, a lot of work with the committee. We addressed a number of different issues. And so what came out of the collection uh, rate study showed that we wanted to maintain the $1.30 program fee. However, we're going, we were going to eliminate the free tonnage included in the rate. We eliminated the U of I administrative fee. And then we converted the residential and commercial cans to roll cart to the roll cart program, which offered the 35, 65, or 95 gallon container size. And the recommendation again was that the annual rate strategy be 3% annual increases starting in 2015. So two years of remaining the same, the 3% started in 2015 and beyond. If I might, Angie, <clears throat> when we did the first study back in 2012, that dollar thirty program fee is charged to all Latok County residents if they're a billable unit. And that included use of the recycling center and the household hazardous waste and so on and so forth. I believe when we did that study that the recommendation or the initial finding was that should increase to like a dollar eighty. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the, the committee discussed the elimination of the free tonnage, we estimated that that free tonnage that was allowed back then was costing about $80,000 annually. So by eliminating the free tonnage, we were able to maintain the $1.30 program to the rest of the county residents for the use of those other programs. But not getting revenue for that waste coming in was really costing a lot of money. So that's why the committee decided to make that adjustment at the time. Is, is the 130 to all Lato County, including the cities within Lato County? Correct. Okay, the, the rural plus the city, every, Correct. Okay, but not, is it also on the city of Moscow? Um, our program fees are included within our base fees. Our base fees calculate for those programs, so it is essentially paid by City of Moscow folks too. It's not, it's not called out directly like it is with the county folks. Okay. Okay. Oops. So switching over to the solid waste processing facility revenue and expenses, and so what you can see here in the last study is that if these were the expenses and this was my revenue, we could tell that it was short of the overall costs associated with that processing facility. And so again, the cost of service that was completed, we'll go into it in a couple of slides, recommended some adjustments in terms of how we were charging for those particular charges in 2013 and kind of recalibrated that particular year, followed by 3% per year increases to begin in fiscal year 2014. So we knew we had some ground to make up, but we also you know, wanted to say, okay, well, what can we do about this? We know there's gonna be some impacts. How do we implement that? So again, here, just some of the cost pool information for your the processing facilities. So we have the solid waste operations in terms of contract costs. We have disposal landfill. And then we actually broke it up to some direct costs because we wanted to look at what were the direct costs of providing appliances, tires, and asbestos disposal. And so we wanted to look at you know, what, what are those costs and how do we want to recommend those fees for those particular waste types. Very similar to the collection utility, we looked at, again, what are my overall costs that I'm incurring for this particular facility? 
what is that? What are the definitions here? And then how do I base those particular costs? How do I allocate those costs to the users? And so you can see here, most of those costs are going to be assigned a dollar per ton in terms of the operations and the landfill disposal and the contract type of costs are, are dollar per ton. But what we did look at was the appliances, tires, and asbestos we're actually going to be looking at independently, and we were going to directly assign the cost of that disposal to those particular waste types, again, just to see where we were compared to what we were charging. And so in terms of the changes that were implemented, quite a bit, again, work was, was completed by the committee. And so the committee had decided that it was the best decision at that time to eliminate the free tonnage at the solid waste processing facility. There would be an instituting a $10 minimum charge at the scale house. The charge for tires was going to be a direct pass-through cost only. So it actually did show the cost of service was a little bit higher, but we're only going to basically assign direct pass-through costs. And so it actually was a little bit less than cost of service. But asbestos was going to be cost of service base rates, and so we were going to fully, fully charge the actual cost of disposal for asbestos. So in terms of the recommendation, the annual rate strategy was not implemented. So in terms of the 3% increase for the collection in 2015, we did start that 3% increase per year. Well, we had noted that in 2013, you can kind of see it here, the rate study actually showed that in 2013 we were going to do a recalibration, and then every year thereafter should be a 3% per year in order to, to meet the overall financial obligations of that processing facility. Because of the contracts that we have in place, we are essentially limit, limited to various different CPI inflationary factors in terms of fees. And so that's what you can see in these particular rows here is that starting in 2014, really what, a th what a th should have been a 3% actually had to be something less. And then as you go out over time, especially in the 2017 year, we're now falling further and farther behind in terms of what the word recommendation was and then what the contract limitations were in terms of those particular ability to, to change the fees. Uh, Mayor. Yes. Um, so, Angie, the committee, and I presume it was, it was affirmed by the council, recommended a rate strategy that they knew they weren't going to implement because of the, the, the cost of living in the contracts? I think what happened was um, we had just renegotiated um, disposal contracts with the county and the city prior to that cities. rate. Cities. Cor correct. And the cities. Okay. Correct prior to adoption of the rate study, before it was actually complete and adopted. So rather than go back in and redo those contracts at that point, we decided to just go with what the contract said with the CPI, and that's why we did another rate study update so soon after the, the 2012 rate study was to take a look at where where we were at, where we were going, do we need to adjust bef you know, before this gets out of hand. Gary, did you, yeah, you have somewhere? to remember, when we initially negotiated these agreements in 1993, our idea was longevity. We weren't sure. Part of the reason was we negotiated a really good deal with waste management, taking our waste to a, a landfill that was supposed to be opened up near Hooper, Washington. And we saved an enormous amount of money because they hoped to open that up which is why waste management for years and still is shipping or their, their assinees now are shipping our waste all the way to Boardman, Oregon at the same price as dropping it off at Hooper, Washington by Washtucna. They're eating that other half that doubled the distance because of the great, it was a good contract that was negotiated. It was a 10-year contract with two additional 10-year extensions. So we were kind of tied in to those 10-year time frames. We also had 10-year agreements with the uh, cities and the county. County, I think, is on five-year now, Tim, I believe. Or are they all on five-year? I can't remember. It was on a... They were renegotiated at a at a ten year stint, but at five years they could withdraw from that. If That's they right. Chose. It was a renewal. So, but the idea was longevity, stability of rates. So, Tim was hired not ten years ago when these were were renewed, but when he came on and we had a sanitation management professional, he pointed out that we probably ought to do 
a study to make sure that we were able to um, feed the beast, so to speak, make sure we had a sustainable sanitation system that took into account operations, capital, longevity, um, efficient rates to the consumer, so on and so forth. And that was the 12 study. Exactly. So Tim came in, those contracts had already been renewed. We could have said, hey, the contracts are the contracts. Why do this rate study till year nine? But we felt we wanted to know, and the council felt it wanted to know where we were today. So as we go forward, we're able to do some adjustments. And that's really what we're here today for, what Tim and Angie are going to be suggesting, and what the county and the small cities are indicating that they would like to do will actually benefit them in the long run by taking a series of marginal increases as opposed to one giant increase at the end to equalize out the system. So if, just to chase this rabbit a little bit further, so the, the underlying comment that the recommended annual rates strategy of 2012 was not implemented is not so much not implemented, it was a, an, a recognition of a problem and at the same time the recognition that you've got these fairly new contracts with CPI increases built in and therefore you're going to just have to let it run a while. Exactly. We were, we were bound, preemptively bound by the contracts that we'd signed that had a certain percentage of a CPI that was built in. You remember back in those days, we talked about the, the sanitation or LSI as well as waste connections came in and wanted us to put a, a pegged fuel rate in to protect themselves from spiking diesel rates. Council, um, in its wisdom, I believe, at that time said, you know, on a one-time basis, you come in, if you can prove to us that it's as big a problem as you say, we'll help you out, but we're not going to adjust our contracts so it adjusts automatically because we can't get into your business and actually see what the margins are. So it worked out really well. This is what, what really we're doing here is just to check the system, make sure that the next decisions the council makes and our partners make are designed for the long-term sustainability of the system. The, what, 